The exhibition that I'm curating for the Arts Council collection is called Night in the Museum, which alludes to some sort of fantasy of an artist pretending to be a curator, which I am. It sort of takes its logic from a work that I've made previously and that's also a commission. The work is a bronze sculpture of an approximation of a Degas ballerina. And I've done a few of these because it's part of a sort of narrative of how I could bring Degas' ballerina to life and make her explore the institution of art. So in these different scenarios, she looks around the gallery, she has a cigarette, and in this one that I'm making now for the Arts Council collection, she falls asleep and she hides behind a blue cube. So each of these works is made of three components, and one is a pedestal, and one is a blue cube, and one is a bronze figure of the ballerina. And the blue cube sort of represents contemporary art in general. It's like a motif. So if you imagine in a Bugs Bunny cartoon, if they were to show contemporary art, they might show a blue cube. And then the pedestal kind of represents the institution of art or the museum. It's the thing that for so many years she's been stuck to. And then there's her, herself, the figure. The first time I saw a Degas ballerina was in Pittsburgh at the Carnegie Museum. And I was kind of drawn to her and there's something very sad about her because she stuck to this, this plinth and she watches everyone looking at her. And then every time I'd go to a museum, I'd always hunt out the Degas ballerina and look for her. And I became a bit obsessed with her. And in this obsession, there was this kind of sadness that I wanted to remove her from the plinth and give her a life. And I kind of understood her as a spectator, like all the other visitors in the museum. It changes that scenario or that dualism of the spectator and the spectacle. Whereas the, the ballerina usually is the artwork, the thing, the spectacle, the thing that's looked at by the visitor, she becomes the spectator. And she herself looks at the blue cube so she looks at other works. So it mixes that kind of relationship up. And the way I've gone about looking at the collection is to find two sets of work. One, one side is figures, figurative work that's based on the figure of the human form. And the, the other side is to look at works in the collection that I really like, that works that I admire or works that inform my own practice. And the only real thematic to that is that all the works must contain the colour blue, which is kind of ironic because I'm profoundly colour blind. It's a sort of zero point. So if you think of when you unplug the HDMI cable from your TV, it goes blue. And a blue screen is a neutral colour, it means no signal. And if you think of chroma key, which is a colour which is the least like the tone of human flesh. And when you look at the night sky, it's black but it's not black it's a, the depth all is blue but the depth is the color so there's it's kind of blue is the color inf of infinity as well and then obviously there's the Yves Klein ultramarine as being a kind of standardization of a zero point in the history of art the exhibition is a, a collection of works that are grouped together in twos and you have an artwork that has a gaze that's looking and that artwork looks at another artwork so there's this kind of tension between these two elements that mostly are profoundly unrelated. There's this weird collision between them. Curating the show is actually a really hard job for an artist. I don't know how to curate. I know a bit about visual language and I know the things that I like, but I'm not a trained professional. So for me, the selection was based on a kind of process of elimination and to set myself some guidelines or parameters in which to select by. So uh, the first one was the colour scheme, which is kind of, it's a little bit ironic. I often make jokes with friends that curated students at colleges curate by colours. Oh, we'll do a yellow show or a blue show. So it's kind of based in that, that kind of joke, I guess. And then the other one was the figure. So that all automatically narrows down the collection. And then from what's left, I selected things that I thought were interesting or significant. Not only things that I liked, things that hadn't been shown before, or things that have significant historical grounds to be shown. For me, I think when I go to a museum, I look at the other visitors, their reactions to work, because you can have your own opinion about a work, but it's almost like seeing 
the validation through other people's reactions is really interesting. And there's something about that relationship, this moving physical body that's alive, that has this ability to view and to think and to meander and navigate in relationship to this kind of static thing that's static in history and static physically is that there's a there's a really nice tension between those two things often you can sit in a museum and see people and sculptures and it's almost automated performance without it, it knowing that it is i'd like the visitor's experience to be one of feeling spoiled you know when you go into a show and there's there's so much and you wander around every corner you're like oh and this oh and that and and that the things are so diverse there's such a randomness or such a lack of association to them that there's this, there's, they're surprising. I mean, the big thing in any creative practice for me is to avoid predictability. So yeah, to be, to be surprised would be a good reading and to, to feel spoilt for choice would be a good reaction. And I hope that the interpretations of it will be vast and off at tangents, not singular. That would be nice. But you never know, do you, until you're there. I'm looking forward to it.